Hello and welcome to Money Matter Talks. It is our privilege to introduce Nilesh Pradhan. He is a practicing company secretary for the past 20 years and is renowned for his compliance based advice. Over to you Nilesh. Thank you Gautam. Friends, the topic for today is initial public offer. Now, what is initial public offer? Is it first time opportunity for a businessman? Trust me, the answer is no. So another question which gets from here is that where does it start from? Is initial public offer a beginning or a new way of beginning? New way of beginning is something which we have been hearing these days post corona COVID issues. It is an interesting question. Let me share with you some interesting facts about it. For any business, the first step is conceptualization, wherein some people come up with an idea which is sustainable as well as futuristic. And based upon that idea, what they create is a concept of generating a business opportunity. Generally, it starts with a humble legal structure of a private limited company, wherein the intention is to do business on a regular but consistent basis and ensure that the concepts which the conceptualization team, which are called as promoters of that entity, believe in, get into recognition by the people to a certain extent, maybe to a larger extent as well. Thereafter, the next step is consistent performance over the years wherein the concept is taken to the next level, which involves creating new ideas, new product lines, and then comes the requirement of new sources of funds for such expansion. No expansion can happen without appropriate funds. Now, this can be contributed by family as, for, as well as friends. This is a typical policy, typical method in which every private limited company starts to work with its financial requirements. Now, is it enough for an entity to take itself to the next level? The answer may not be yes. Here comes into the picture a concept of opportunity, which is initial public offer. Now, you know what happens? This concept comes when there is a boom in the business. When the promoters feel that there is a boom in the business, there is a possibility of generating revenues through the expansion of business. And that is the actual objective or general objective of our IPO. The object, a typical object of IPO is to collect funds from people at large who are generally called as investor. When existing sources of funds are exhausted or they may not be sufficient, the promoters, that is the conceptualization team members, may be ready they get into a position, they get to put themselves into a position to sell their ownership share as against the money to be received for such expansion, which they believe in. Now, this is in the best interest of the company for the longer runs. Now, why? Because they are getting money. For what? Expansion. Now, what? Money comes and shares go off? Easy? Right? No. The process of IPO is very important and cumbersome. Now, why cumbersome? Let me tell you. Now, these promoters who are willing to take money from people at large, they are in a position to take a money at large. I told you that now they are going for an expansion. Now, Government of India comes into application. Why? Because the money is to be taken from public at large and the intention of lawmakers is to protect people at large. Now, through various legal entities which they have created, such as stock exchanges, Securities Exchange Board of India, Registrar of Companies, Ministry of Cor Corporate Affairs, Reserve Bank of India, they monitor these requirements, they check whether the requirements which are required to be complied by this company and the processes which they have led for raising money from the people are satisfied or not. Some basic requirement for this is turnover and consistent dividend payment record. Along with the fact that a private limited company, since it cannot raise money from a public at large, needs to be converted into a public limited company wherein the Ministry of Corporate Affairs and the Register of Companies vet every possible document and only upon the satisfaction of appropriate legal submissions, they give a approval for conversion of a private company into a public company. Now, few important steps in this regard can be listed as under. Satisfaction of basic eligibility criteria. Now, what is satisfaction of basic eligibility criteria? Every stock exchange has laid down certain criteria which needs to be satisfied. Everywhere the requirements are cumbersome but different. Now, it needs appointment of various agencies. These agencies could be merchant bankers, lead bankers and so on. These agencies are required to be appointed to check every document and every process with respect to this IPO. 
after complying with this long tedious detailed requirement one becomes technically ineligible to go for ipo which means only a company which successfully completes the process let me tell you only a company which successfully completes the process and steps as given above and receives approval from various authorities including but not limited to the authorities which are stated above only then the company becomes eligible to go for a public offer that is initial public offer now another question whether one should invest in these public offers or whether the process is complete no this is an opportunity for the investors to get into or invest their funds or put their money into these companies wherein the documentation the compliance part is checked by various agencies various independent agencies as well as government agencies and then comes the actual initial public offer for to be subscribed by the people at large well now the question again i repeat the question whether one should invest now the processes which we discussed are so rigorous and needs so much of checking by various top authorities like sebi one may get a reasonable assurance that you know these documents are properly complied this this company has properly complied the compliances are appropriately taken care of trust me investment in shares always involve risk but which trust strict vigilance and supervision one can find oneself into a comfortable position of legal assurance about the documentation part about the processes about the systems which is the base of every opportunity rather a investment opportunity now a question comes should we go for a ipo yes one can so go for the ipo as an investment okay these shares may not be available at a at a lower price at a later date but that is your call now is it a risk yes it is a risk but according to us it is a calculated risk keep your eyes open read all the document that are submitted while taking the approval for the ipo by company in detail take advices given to you by your consultants brokers keep your brain open do not get impressed by any of the tips do not get do not get trapped by anything only get to the official sites go to sebi site go to stock exchange site study the documents well and post you are satisfied go for opportunity called an ipo as a matter of caution these documents checking is very important so do not do anything in a haste but ipo post all this satisfaction becomes an opportunity for the investors so with all my best wishes go for ipo thank you wow it was amazing thank you nilesh for your words of wisdom do like share and subscribe to money matters talks happy investing